This is anisometropia, definitions, epidemiology, and the effects on vision. Anisometropia is when the spherical refractive components differ by more than one diopter between the two. There are a number of different classification systems which we'll go into. They could be classified as isoanisometropic, both eyes are either myopic or hyperopic, though this term is not often used. Some people also use the term antimetropia, whereas one eye is myopic and the other is hyperopic. The most important thing, though, is the classification difference in diopteric value. Low anisometropia is typically classified as under two diopters difference, whereas high anisometropia is over two diopters. And this is critical because the two diopter threshold is the amount of anisometropia the average person can, can tolerate, and as we increase above that amount, it becomes less tolerable. Here's two patient examples to illustrate the difference between anisometropia and not anisometropic. In the top example, there's a two diopter difference between the person's right eye and their left eye. In this case, they're anisometropic. The patient below only has three quarters of a diopter of difference between the two eyes. This is not anisometropia. Let's look at some terminology. Compound myopic anisometropia, or anisometropia in which both eyes are myopic. Simple myopic anisometropia is when one eye is emetropic and the other is myopic. Crossed meridional anisometropia is the anisometropia in which one eye's axis is 90 degrees away from the other eye's axis. Compound, similarly, compound hyperopic anisometropia is when both eyes are hyperopic. Simple hyperopic is when one eye is hyperopic and one's emetropic. And finally, mixed anisometropia, anisometropia in which one eye is myopic and one eye is hyperopic, also known as antimetropia. Generally, in the, the general population, the difference between the two eyes is relatively low. If we look at one diopter or less, about 90% of the population has less than one diopter difference between the two eyes. And the remaining, about 7%, are within two diopters between the two eyes. Anisometropia above three diopters is relatively uncommon, less than 1% of the population. Now, anisometropia actually changes throughout our lifetime. The prevalence of greater than one diopter in children is about 17% when they're born, and that's because the eyes were born in the dark, they have not emetropized yet, they've had no visual input to modify and correct their vision. Because of this, the eyes can be in any position as far as axial length goes. By the age of five to six, though, emetropization has reduced anisometropia to about 1%. This will start to increase as we introduce myopia in the teenage years, and will increase in even further when we start to deal with disease, cataracts, cataract formations, diabetes, and elderly. Again, in normally born infants, it can be anywhere between 11 to 17 percent, but that amount of anisometropia actually goes up with premature infants. Also, children with ETs or esotropias and strabismus have a higher incidence of anisometropia. And for obvious reasons, which we'll go into in amblyopia, 37% of the children with amblyopia have anisometropia, anisometropia being the primary cause of their amblyopia in this situation. Typically, most cases of anisometropia are due to axial length. Sometimes, though, the crystalline lens can contribute to some cases. Rarely is the cornea involved without trauma or surgery involved as part of it. And finally, ptosis, lid apathy, or eyelid closures can cause axial length changes as well, and that's through form deprivation, which can induce anisometropia. Other causes of anisometropia, including trauma, which includes surgery, any vitreous hemorrhages in children under two and a half, retinal diseases can cause anisometropia, including diabetic retinopathy, wet macular degeneration, Surgeries such as eye well transplantation, keratoplasty, refractive surgeries, as well as retinal detachment buckle surgery. And finally, some people are just born with monovision naturally, and they have one eye set for distance and one eye set for near. Some symptoms of people with anisometropia is asthenopia, eye strain or discomfort, pain, fatigue, and burning association. Sometimes accommodation never can get this image clear. They also tend to have headaches, motion sickness, complaints of unilateral or intermittent blurred vision, and complaints of tilted vision. Some of the signs of anisometropia are unequal accommodative response, 
reduced stereopsis, suppression of one eye, vertical imbalance, diplopia, and poor reading performance. Some other findings in anisometropia are dominance. Often the more minus lens or less plus lens is the dominant eye. And that's because it was closer to zero during the developmental years. Monovision viewing, in myopic anisometropia, one eye, which is less minus, is used for distance typically, and the other is for more minus is used for near. In amblyopia, a common finding is compound hyperopic anisometropia, and it's less common in other types. Anisometropy also leads to something called anisoconia, which we will deal with in a little bit. Ultimately, though, anisoconia, which is causing many of these symptoms, is due to the different image sizes in each eye. A simple definition, the condition in which the visual images of the two eyes are of different size or shape, that is an anisoconia. Image sizes differing by greater than 0.75% are not a problem, but clinically significant if it becomes 3 to 5% difference in size. Typically about one diopter will cause about 1% difference in image size. Visual images versus retinal images. The retinal image determines solely by the ocular diopter elements. The visual images, though, however, are determined not only by the optics, but also by the entire eye of the visual system. Let's consider anisometropia and anisoconia here in this image. We start out with a real image of the same size in both eyes. One eye is a minus two myope, and one, the other one's a minus five diopter myope. Because there's a three diopter difference, this person is anisometropic. Ultimately, the more minus lens will minify the image, creating a smaller image on the retina. Ultimately, when the, this image goes back to the brain to combine between the larger image and the smaller image, there is now a difference in size between the two eyes. And the brain now has to process which eye to interpret and how to combine the images. This is considered binocular rivalry. And ultimately, this is taking place in the V1 striate cortex, as the brain is trying to interpret these images and combine them properly. Oftentimes, though, the information disagrees between the eyes in this case, and the brain can't deal with it. There are a number of anisoconia classifications, refractive or intrinsic. Refractive anisoconia is due to anisometropia. It can be symmetrical or asymmetrical, meridional or dynamic. Intrinsic or basic anisoconia is the, in the absence of anisometropia. This is typically secondary to disease, often retinal disease specifically, and it can sometimes vary with the, the gaze, gaze call field dependent anisoconia. Symmetric or asymmetric anisoconia. Symmetric anisoconia is when the overall mag difference between is not the same in all meridians. This is by far the most common. Meridional mag asymmetry is mag varies meridian to meridian, but it's the same with meridians, within the meridians. This is due to astigmatism. Asymmetric anisoconia is due to magnification difference, typically from lenses. And this is oftentimes can either be due to corneal distortions or retinal disease at times. This causes certain types of, of field distortions, including barrel distortion, pincushion distortion, and irregular distortion. These are not easily corrected if they're optically within the eye. Image A here shows symmetric overall distortion. This is where the image stays in the same proportions, and it just changes in overall size. Images B and C show symmetrical meridional in a soconia where the images stretch in one meridian, but the other one remains relatively constant. Images D, E, and F, though, show things due to ocular distortions within the eye sometimes, which cause barrel distortion, pincushion distortion, or asymmetric distortion in general of the image. When that happens, we can see how that image looks in real life, barrel distortion, pincushion distortion, and perfectly corrected vision. Anisoconia has a prevalence of 3 to 5% in the general population. Symptoms, though, are below 2% magnification difference typically. 20 to 30% of the population has some measurable degree of anisoconia, though they are not symptomatic. By type of anisoconia, refractive anisoconia is about 70% of the source of anisoconia. 
intrinsic or due to the retinal disease is only 27% of the population. Anisoconia caused by refractive can have a number of different sources. It can be caused by the optics, so spherical anisometropia, which causes an overall change in the image size, and this is oftentimes due to the axial length differences. Meridional astigmatism can cause meridional aseconia, where it distorts only part of the field in the horizontal or vertical plane. And some of these can be dealt with with spectacle lens designs that can either both cause anisoconia or correct it, which we will get into later. Unequal vertex distances between the two eyes can also induce anisoconia because the vertex distance defines the magnification. Finally, aphakia or pseudophakia can also cause anisoconia optically. Intrinsic anisoconia is typically caused by pathological ocular disease. It's optically induced through pathological anisoconia, so examples of that would be keratoconus, pseudophakia, or some refractive surgeries. It also can be done by, through retinally induced anisoconia, anything that stretches or compresses the retina. Pathological myopia is an example where the eye is stretched, or retinal detachment surgery. Also, local distortions or metamorphopsias can occur. Epiretinal membranes are fibrous membranes that grow across the retina and can stretch and pull the retina, thereby misplacing the retinal elements in one eye relative to the other, inducing anisoconia. Typically, there's a number of anisoconia symptoms, very similar to anisometropia, since they are highly related. Astinopia is the primary, co primary complaint followed by headaches, photophobia, reading dif difficulty. In some extreme cases, you can have nausea, diplopia, vertical, vertigo, fatigue, and some abnormal spacing, spacing issues. Thank you.